So now let's go ahead and take a look at the implementation of this pattern in C++. And you can see that we're going to look at the options singleton. We'll take another look at the reactor singleton in a moment. So here we've got the options class. It's just a good old C++ class. It has an options data member, which is static, which is going to hold the one and only instance. It's got an instance method, which returns an options pointer. It's also a static method. It's public. And as you can see, if instance, if the static instance data member is the null pointer, we make a new options object, and then we return instance no matter what. So this is that whole lazy initialization concept. Down here are just a spate of non-static methods that will do various things on the singleton instance. Uh, these can really only be called, of course, on the singleton, and we'll see how we ensure that in just a second. So verbose returns true if we're in verbose mode or not. Parse args parses the command line arguments to set a flag that indicates whether we're in verbose mode or not. Here are some of the non-static fields, like verbose and other things we might want to have store the state of the one and only instance. And then finally, we ensure that there's no more than one instance by defining the constructor to be private. So we can basically disable that. We could probably also you know, delete the constructor. Um, but I think this is the clean way to do it because it's easy to glance to say, oh, the, the options constructor is private. And it's got a method called instance that's static. And it's got a field called instance that's static. It's probably the singleton pattern. So that's a those are good examples of indicia of singletonness. So now what I'm going to do is just kind of walk through briefly some code that implements the singleton pattern more thoroughly. So you can see here we have the static instance method. We have a bunch of non-static methods that do various things to access the state of the singleton. Uh, we put the constructor in the private part. We have a bunch of non-static fields here. We have our static instance underscore method that will keep track of the singleton. And then if you go over here and look, you can see that we implement instance using this lazy initialization technique that we talked about before. You'll notice, by the way, that these other methods are just good old regular non-static methods. They return the corresponding fields. And those fields are all set by the parse args method. And that needs to be called when you first start up in order to give the command line arguments that are passed to the program by main in order to set the values of the options singleton. Uh, I'll also just briefly show the reactor. So here's the reactor. As you can see, the reactor is also a singleton. It has an instance method that returns a reactor pointer. It's a static method. We put the constructor in the private part. We have a static data member called instance underscore, and then a bunch of non-static state that keeps track of stuff needed to implement the reactor. And as before, you can see that we implement the lazy initialization semantics of our instance method in an identical way that we did with the implementation of the options singleton. So singleton is a very straightforward pattern. It's not hard to implement, but it's easily abused, as we'll talk about in the next discussion.